I'd like to greet the Church of God in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. time. Uh, We'll be looking at the book of Joshua 4, verses 19, right up to 24. We're looking at the book of Joshua 4, verses 19 up to 24. And I will read in your hearing. On the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, in the future when your descendants ask their fathers, what do these stones mean? Tell them Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until uh, you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what, just what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until he, uh, we had crossed over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord, your God. The the sermon is titled, The Same God. The sermon is titled, The Same God. May we please close our eyes to invite the Lord. Lord in heaven, thank you so much that we are here. Thank you, Lord, that you're able to keep us healthy. You're able to keep us blessed. You're able, Lord, to ensure that we are all well. Speak to us now, Lord, and let us hear you in the complete message that you're trying to give us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. For us to start looking at this, we need to start in the book of Joshua 1. Now, this is just before the children of Israel were about to get the promised land. I hope I've greeted you all well. So this is about that, just about about to receive the promised land. And now Moses has died and they've mourned for 30 days. Are we together, church? We are in the book of Joshua 1. And now Joshua is taking over from Moses. Now there's a problem. Always when there's a change in leadership, we worry. Because what if the new leader is not like the old leader? You see, the reason why they mourned is that they missed Moses. And they were concerned to say, whoever might take over might not do justice as Moses has done. And now we are in an issue because leadership or position is not given to an individual. It's given to character. A character is the one that assumes the role, not the leader. You cannot lead when you take things personally. You cannot lead when you are always about you. Because when we have leaders who are about themselves, we are in turmoil. That's why we are in the state that we are in. Sometimes we have let selfish, corrupt people lead us. Does not matter whether it's outside, does not matter whether it's in the church. We are led by the corrupt. Now Joshua has to take over. And in him taking over, they are not too sure. Because at the time when he was with Moses, he was just a prime minister. So if it was a problem, they could complain to Moses to say, this boy of yours is a problem. And he's starting to annoy us. Now Moses is gone. If this one cannot lead us, who do we go to? And now he has to take over. Therefore, he needed to have character traits that are suited. He needed to be incorruptible. He needed to be prompt. He needed to be a leader that is selfless before he takes them over to the Jordan. And God needed to ensure that. Then God had a conversation with him in Joshua 1. He said, just as I did with Moses, I will do with you. Why? Because I see what I saw in Moses in you. I see that you are selfless. I see that you are incorruptible. I see that you understand that this is a mission. It is not about you. Sometimes, church, for us to move forward, we need to remember it's not about us. It's about the mission that we are going for. It's about we are going somewhere. We are in an advent movement. We must move. If we have to leave you behind, so be it. 
Sometimes we're so concerned about other people that we now we must nurse you, take care of you, and you are making us stand still. The boat must move, but you are the anchor. We are stuck because of someone. Then we pray about you, not for you, about you. Some of us here are prayers to say, this person is troubling me. And we cannot move forward because of you. Therefore, position cannot be given to an individual. It has to be given to a character. That's what made Joshua perfect. Because of his character. It was not about whether you are male. You know, you know in these days, they're like, no, uh, let women lead. Let who lead? Let young people lead. No. Character. Character. Because you can be a female and corrupt. You can be young and corrupt. You can be a man and corrupt. Character. To the point where we become tribalistic. You can be Tuana and corrupt. Does not matter. It's character. Then we move on. So he's now decided to be a leader. Now they have, he sent spies over to the city of Jericho. When he has sent the spies over to the city of Jericho, they are now finding themselves in trouble because the king is concerned. Because he has heard and they know that that land now belongs to the Israelites because it's the promised land. And it has been given to them by God. So the spies find a shelter in the house of a prostitute. Now, how ironic it is that the downtrodden are the ones who give us hope. That the ones who are nobody in society, that the ones who do not have hope, imagine even in this day and age, to be a prostitute, there's no glamour behind it. I don't care how Instagram can make it look so beautiful to be a prostitute. No matter how Instagram can glamorize it, your dignity is lost. The thing is, in this day and age, we have glamorized things that have no glamour between them. There's nothing glamorous about jumping from one house to another house in exchange for money. One thing I've learned recently about illness, you know illness does not care how much money you have in the account. It can be funny that you can get sick on your payday and die on that payday. It does not even consult to say, hi, I bought a house for 100,000, you are sick. You're sick, you can't buy health. Out of all things we can buy, health, you can't buy it. You, you can't. But we've glamorized all these funny things in this world. We even, we even say, no, you know, what will I get? What will I receive? Hey, do you, you will die. You will die in that Lamborghini with the cushy tw toilet paper. You will die. We should stop glamorizing these things. It's better to be poor with your dignity. It is better to be poor and say, none on me belongs to anybody. I am nobody's property. It's better to be poor that way, to say that I belong to God in my poverty. It's fine. So Rahab talks to them and has a conversation with them and says, our hearts are melting because we've heard what your God can do. You see, one thing we must note, church, is that not everyone will love you because you are the child of God. There are some people who know they can't do anything to you because of the God you have. But it's that very same God we easily abandon. There are some people who know they can't harm you because of the God you have. Not everyone is happy that you are a child of God. They are waiting for the day you leave this church so they can go for you. They are pushing, they are striving so that you can depart from God, then you become an easy target. Not everyone has your best intention. We all smile at each other does not mean we like each other. 
The church is a prime example. We all say happy Sabbath to each other. Does not mean we like each other. The church is a prime example. We all greet each other smelling nice here, but does not mean we like each other. Because the same people in this building can open a WhatsApp group about you and discuss you. And then tomorrow say, Happy Sabbath, God be with you, may He bless you abundantly. The same people. So just because we are with you does not mean we are with you. So she tells them that their hearts are melting. And this is the time or the prime time that the people in Jericho are concerned. And now when the people in Jericho are concerned, they, are, they, 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 they want to prevent the Israelites from taking this city, the promised land. She hides them and says, I want you to promise that when you claim this land, nothing is going to happen to me. They make the covenant, they make the promise, they leave. When they leave, now Joshua sees it's time to move. Remember when I said the character, to say as a leader you need to be prompt. One thing you need to understand, as a leader you need to understand timing. You need to understand when it's time to move, it's time to move. You cannot procrastinate. It speaks to our states and our Christianity. Sometimes just because Jesus is taking time does not mean you must take time to change. Just because we are waiting upon the Lord does not mean you must take time. Sometimes you need to be quick about it. Because if it's to come and leave you behind, then you say, if only. So now, in the promptness of it, he comes and gives them a message to say, when you see the Levites pick up the Ark of the Covenant and move towards the Jordan, you must stand up. This is crucial. Why? If you go back and you understand, they, he was trying to say, keep your eyes on the Ark of the Covenant. And if we understand what the Ark of the Covenant is, it is the manifestation of God. So for you to know when to move, keep your eyes on God. Do not be too bothered by things that you are doing. He did not tell them of a time. He said, when you see the Ark of the Covenant moving, move. It does not matter what you are doing. Drop it. It does not matter. The Ark of the Covenant is moving. Keep your eyes on it. He did not tell them of a time. Read Joshua 3. He said, when you see the Ark of the Covenant moving, it could have been that day. It could have been the following day. They had to sit there and watch. How long have you kept your eyes on God for you to come tomorrow and say your life is stagnant? What if you kept your eyes peeled, looking towards him, and understood that when now it's the time to move, you move. When they got close to the water, the Levites got inside, carrying the ark. The water welled up. It moved aside. There was dry ground. They passed by. This is now where we are about the stones. When now they passed by, he remembered the commandment to say, take stones. But they did not say take any type of stones. They said, take the stones in the middle of the Jordan. And I have to be specific about that. Can I stay there for a little while? Yeah. Can I be there for a little while? You see, the rocks that are within a riverbank are not the same of the rocks that are outside of the riverbank. The color is not the same. The composition is not the same. The, the difference between a rock inside a riverbed and a rock outside, maybe the church is not with me. The thing is that the reason why you had to choose those rocks, they were different to other rocks. We should not cheat the process. The process is saying, fetch those rocks. Now, I did research. Because when you preach, you must do research. This is Orlando East. It's a serious church. So, I did research, and I found out that the color of the rocks is different. You see, the colors of rocks outside of the riverbank are not the same colors of the rocks inside. You see, the ones who are inside are becoming more pale. Why are they more pale? They have less contact with the sun because they're inside water. 
they are more rounded off. Why? Because they have no contact with wind, meaning there's no erosion. So they cannot be rigid. They are smooth. Ish. The rocks inside the riverbed have no contact with the wind. They have no contact with any outside elements. The only thing they are with is with the water. So they would be different to the rocks outside. So when the rocks outside are crooked and skew, these ones are smooth. That's why it would be easily noticeable to the descendants to say, why these rocks are smooth and these ones are hard? Why do these rocks have corners and edges and are broken off, but these ones seem that they've never seen a day of sunlight? That's what made them special. Can I just bring it to you? Maybe we are different to people outside because we are inside the Lord. That we are not in contact with the elements. That we are protected. That's why when we stand next to them, we are supposed to look different. Our composition is different. Our color is different. How we look at things is different. We are different types of rocks. So they take the rocks out, they put them there, the Levites cross over, and then they have a discussion. And the discussion is the same God they had when they exited uh, Egypt is the same God they have now, because the miracle is the same. It did not matter that they lost people before. It did not matter that the, the things have changed. It is the same God. That was the whole point of the rocks to show your God is consistent. Your God does not change. Your God does not suffer from mood swings. Your God is always your God. Your God does not need confidence boosters. Your God does not need you. You need your God. Because the hand of the Lord is mightier than any other God's hand. That was the purpose of those rocks. So that when enemies would go for them, they point to the rocks. And if any enemy would try, you see the beauty about the Jordan River, if you research it well, it was one that flooded easily. So if anyone would want to cheat and copy the miracle, they would drown. People trying to be God drowned easily. They would drown. So the, the miracle of itself could not be duplicated. And the beauty of it, it was the 12 stones. Can I go there? Can I go for a little while? Sometimes, sometimes, don't think you are blessed because we are not blessed. The blessedness of all of us is because we are all blessed. Don't look at your blessing with the eyes of saying, as long as Chipo does not have it, it means I'm blessed. Sorry. When you have it and I don't have it, it means that God is in the neighborhood. That's why we all pick up stones. That's why we are all represented. Because he's a God for all of us. It does not matter what we do. He's a God for all of us. Does not matter. God is in this vicinity. Just because you are now there, now all of us must now worship you. No, 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 no. God is for all of us. God is for all of us. We worship the same God. All of us here. So have that in your mind. Whenever life hits you, look at the stones. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen.